Just, it's casual. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go, everybody. You know, from from my, from, you know, what I'm saying we got a special guest today. My guy, humble greatness in the building. What's going on, man? What's popping? You feel better now. You, you more comfortable. <laughs> I'm cool, man. I'm I'm not a hundred percent, but I'm here. You know what I'm saying? That's good. No, I'm glad yeah. that you made it. You know yeah. that uh, that sore throat ain't no punk. Nah, man, I've been getting blasted, so pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, how you feeling, man? Tired, man, you know, dad life. Yeah. Man, this man just ate the most fire breakfast of all time from <laughs> Sonic. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to hold it together right now. What? 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 I'm, straight, I'm straight sitting over here still thinking about them tater tots being crispy. Though. I, 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 <laughs> I almost arm wrestled him for the tater tots, bro. Nah, I gave it to you, bro. <laughs> oh, man. Hey. No. No. I just realized what you just said. Have you seen him lift weights, dude? I know. I ain't, he I ain't don't, seen it. He don't look strong at all. Because he wears baggy he wears bro, hoodies all the time. That was the ones that you don't fool with. Bro. This dude, just 315. Just. Yeah. <laughs> And this wasn't even intentional. I put the shirt on and the this sleeves. This was after we had we had um a hundred sets or a hundred reps <laughs> of bench. Either way, it's still a hundred. It's hundred or something. It was it was a hundred it was a hundred reps of bench, and this dude just and I was like, bro, you, so you lifting after you did your hundred? Absolutely. Come on, man. We gotta be. We gotta have that uh, that mamba mentality, bro. You know what I'm saying? No pain, no gain. You're so masculine, you know. Come on, now let's get it. You so. You. So I don't masculine. have time to be second place, bro. Come on. You're so masculine, but is is masculinity like? Do you think that is a a uh, like a trait for men that needs balance? Mm. Man, um, gosh, that's a good question. I think the only way you can really balance anything mm. is if you have a group of people around you that have your best interests in mind. Mm. Come on, because you can't balance your you can't balance yourself. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you need a group of people to call you out on your stuff. And low key, that's what you yeah, need, that's what you need. You just need a solid circle. Period. Yeah, hundred percent. So I mean. When there is, that's true. I like that. I actually really like that. And I was uh, I was listening to Nice and Neat, um, uh, balancing that with that softness. Mm. Um, and I was actually talking to my nephew about this on the way here. I was like, at your age, because he's thirteen, um, a lot of boys. We were thirteen, going through puberty, uh, voice starting to get deep. You know, starting to get a little <laughs> muscle, starting to act. You know, like we tough. Like you know what I'm saying? Getting, um, dirt, getting dirt on your lip. Yeah, get that little that little crust dash, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, but, like, everything is, like, everything's a competition. Everything mm. is who's the fastest, who's the strongest, yeah. who's the quickest, who got, you know what I'm saying? Who got the hardest waves? Who got the hardest waves? Come on, bro, triple wave cap back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, got, they are washing their it. hair with their do-rag on. Let's bro, get it. <laughs> I got a cap on under this hat right now. Just because. <laughs> I'm just saying. But the uh, understanding as you get older, like being, t- there's like a, you could be too tough. Because to me, mm-hmm. like being too masculine is a problem. Mm-hmm. Because Absolutely. you're not bound. Like, here's the thing. I got to be able to talk to my wife Come on. in a way where I, I can't be, like, I have to be, yeah, like, for lack of a better word, more gentle, softer. Absolutely. When I'm dealing with her, I can't come over. Like I can't talk to my woman being overbearing. I can't tell her, you know, when she's like, "Hey, babe, can you take the trash out? Uh, it's been stinking for the last couple of days, and you just been walking by it, and uh, I really need help with that." And I'm just like, "Listen, I, you know, what I'm saying, like, I'll come get on, to man, I'll I can. get to him when I can. <laughs> yeah, I smell it, yo. But yo, like, I smelled your socks the other day. They was sitting on the." Come on, man, you know, like we, and just approaching it, you know what I'm saying? Because we do need that balance. I think it's man, that, so important that we. That take for tack be real, though, sometimes. Yeah. Like, you, you'll you have a bad day, and she'll ask you, hey, did you put the dishes up? Be like, hey, you get your hair off that damn sink <laughs> in the bathroom? 
It's so sad. <laughs> Why do we do that? Got a whole pet sitting on the sink. The cuss is going on. So, oh, hair I don't cool. know, man. Yeah. Man. Yeah, no. Um, and that's something I want to instill in, like, if I can instill that in these young men mm. early, like, uh, to be able to balance that. Because, obviously, we're taught growing up, too. That's a part of our upbringing is that we need to be tough. We have to be, we have to throw dirt on it and get back out there and keep going. And there's a there's a part of that that isn't wrong because you're training us for the little things that we like. If I get a little scrape, I don't need a Band-Aid. Yeah. It's just a little scrape. Right. Throw some dirt on it. You know, don't metaphorically throw some dirt on it and get going. You know, keep doing that. But if I if I'm cut deep, I can't throw dirt on that. Mm -hmm. And I mean that like physically, but mentally and emotionally Mm -hmm. cut deep. You know what I'm saying? So I can't, I can't be masculine in this moment to heal from that, you know, because my masculinity, my strength physically isn't going to get me through that pain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I mean, I understand that. But also, also people need to understand, uh, I, how do I want to say this? People need to understand like how to act. In different situations. Absolutely. And you don't always have to be hard. You don't always have to be tough. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a time and a place for it, but. Well, that's important right there. <laughs> it's understanding that there's a time and place to be tough. Absolutely. Like, like, I'm not walking around with shoulder pads on all day thinking I can run through a wall. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, when I'm at the store. I'm just naturally built like that, but yeah, you know, I don't be it that way. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, even superheroes take that cape off, bro. And that's what I had to learn with the real? past yeah. year, bro. Absolutely. For real. I had to learn the past year. So yeah. losing my pops is about to be one year coming up. I just had to learn how to take it off. Especially being with kids and being yeah, with a woman on, and kids being with you. everything like that, man. You gotta learn how to break yourself down. It took that to took that to break me down for real but at the end of the day i'm glad because it made me more accountable made me more vulnerable and it showed people that i can still do both sides mm. uh but i always said a black man's pride and ego will always be his ultimate downfall until he hits the rock bottom and then when he comes back up he got to have that circle to have people hold him accountable and it's good to have mm. a circle it's good to have a circle that's mixed with at least one good woman mm. or one good person that's the opposite sex if you female yeah. to hold you accountable. Because you can't have your boys always in your ear and that's where that over toughness comes from because you got to be tough for them. Yeah. But then when 100%. You get that, then when you get that's that crazy. woman in that gives you that soft touch, she mm-hmm. ain't necessarily got to be your woman, just a good, solid woman friend. Yeah. Or you can have a spiritual mentor, like motherly figure or something. Somebody got to come in and just knock you on the head one time and be like, hey, cut that out. You ain't got to be doing all that. Very but true. it teaches you how to have respect for both sides. So that way, when you go into society, you know how to treat people and you ain't got to put on that tough guy role. Because for me, I'm yeah. always, you know, I've naturally been a brick house just walking around. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That's why I said this t shirt already smiled, wrote a sleeve. Man, like why? Breed, bro. You, walked in, you walked in the room sideways. Man. <laughs> through the door. You know? Blow it from that burrito, bro. <laughs> The most fire record <laughs> of all time. Yo, I, that tater tot had a crazy bite on it, didn't it? it just... <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so. But yeah, that's that's how it is for real, so I, I feel that. No, you know, and. That's real An- talk. Angelo. What's up? Um, you have you have a daughter. I do, man. And Yeah. Yeah, and. And Bailey, you you will have daughters. You know what I'm saying? He has a son, yeah. but you like you you'll probably you're gonna inherit some daughters. Yeah. Um what like this is something I always think about because I know I'm gonna have daughters. Uh oh, I know. The, ex- the Lord has told me. I'm Go telling ahead. you, yo, the example, <laughs> the example I have to set for my daughters is that of a male um that is that does have that that balance yeah. of masculinity and softness because I cannot be hard for sure like that with my daughters. They have to know that I'm going to protect them, that I um that I'm going to lead them and uh bestow wisdom upon them. But they also have to know that I am going to care for them 
uh, better than any man that they're going to meet. Absolutely. And that is going to be the standard when they meet, mm. you know, their future husband or when they're, you know what I'm saying? Um, what is it that you guys are doing right now, like preparing yourselves for man, the future? Yeah, for me, it's just uh, I came up from a really strict household, bro. Mm. Like my dad did 30 years in the military, retired as a colonel, right? Ugh. So, like, yeah, he calls <laughs> shots, bro. Yeah. And it's just like, this is how it is. Don't ask me why type deal. So I always tell myself when I have a child and I have a daughter, I'm not going to be that way. Yeah. Like you tell me to not touch the stove because it's hot, right? Mm -hmm. I still got to feel that heat so I know, you know what I'm saying? Right. So with my daughter, it's not like, like I tell her stuff. And then even if she goes against it, I have to still tell her why. I don't want you to do this because this is what ha it's just like, no, don't touch the stove. Yeah. Don't touch the stove because it's hot. It's going to burn you. And then that scar is going to last for a while. You see what I'm saying? Got it. Got that's it. what I, that's the process that I have with her rather than me growing up. Don't touch the stove. So then I grow I, I grow up and I'm like, why not? Why not? Yeah, why, yeah, not? Yeah. why not? You know what I'm saying? So explaining the the outcome. Hey. I don't want you to hang out with these kids because this is how I feel or I've seen their parents do this. Or the, and she's like, oh, okay, I get it now, right? Um, so that's that's what I'm on personally. Mm. Mine's is more on the opposite end because it's not younger girls, they're older girls. Yeah. <clears throat> and what I've come to find out is that things flip-flop when they get older. Mm. Oh, yeah. So the boys... Absolutely. So the how boys, old are they? 13 and oh, 16. Okay. Yeah, I got, I'm seven. seven. Yeah. Yeah, 13, <laughs> is, okay. 13 or 12 and 16. Mm -hmm. And then Ramon's 14. But it's yeah. an opposite effect. Mm. Like I can be rough with, at a younger age, you can be rough with them. And it seems like they're a lot more sensitive. Mm. But when you build that structure in the beginning, mm -hmm. they turn into the boys when they get older. Yeah. And then the boys kind of get like low key kind of soft. So not, not soft in like, not soft in a way that they just super sensitive. Yeah. But like you tell them no and they ready to like cut themselves or they ready to just get a rope and just hang that. Like, bro, I just told End you no. Yeah, yeah, relax. <laughs> right. But the girls, they'll get an attitude, but then just go straight defiant mode. And they'll be like, oh, this mm. is what we doing? But what I've learned, what I've come to learn is that sometimes as when you're going into the blended side, Mm. When you're not their actual father, on, when you're not man. the actual dad, uh, you got to have that grace with yourself to learn how to blend in and learn them. And you really have to sit down and talk to these kids and not talk at them, allow them well. to talk back with you so that way they can get a feeling of how you are. Um, the fortunate case for me is that they're good girls, and on top of that, they call me their best friend, so they look at me as a best friend. But with, they open up and talk to me a lot of things that they don't talk to their mom about. Mm. And then Ramon, on the flip side, opens up and talks to her about a lot of stuff, too. Um, but at the end of the day, it works out to treat these kids. I treat the kids like adults. So at the end of the day, I'm just like, hey, speak up if you got something to say. If you don't have something to say, don't walk around here with no attitude. If you ain't said what you had to say, get it off your chest. Um, Come on. We also hold them accountable with their own actions. And so if somebody does something and they want to come in, well, I just, well, I just, that's fine. Well, you're just not about to have this, this, and this. You're not about to go out and do all this until you actually do what you're supposed to be held accountable for. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm the grades yeah. uh, dictator. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I don't allow C's at all. Mm. And so but Ramon and C's, C's get degrees, though. Bro. <laughs> Caesar yeah, he, get, he ain't rocking with that. Hey man, no, no. Caesar gets degrees on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but still, no. But I know you didn't have C's. It no, wasn't no. even that I didn't have C's. Yeah, it was more of I held myself. I was hard on myself already. I didn't need yeah. my dad to, yeah. even though he was hard on me. Mm. But the benefits that you get from having honor roll Come almost on, your bro. whole career, yeah, bro, you just get unlocked. I didn't have to go to class half the time. Not mm. because I didn't do the work, but because my grades were so high and I kept them high. Being an athlete, half the time I didn't have to go to class, but I got scholarships out of academic scholarships, and I was trying to go for athletic. Yeah, I had full ride scholarships that but I see, turned down to play football. Here's another thing the, too that you you kind of leaving out, Bailey. Like you, you're also 
a smart individual. Like you're 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 smart, Bailey. You're very smart. You were in physics junior year of high school. Oh, yeah, What's your GPA? You're smart. Cumulative or just my junior year? See. I already know he's smart. <laughs> <laughs> I already know he's smart. Ain't nobody asked that question. Cumulative. Yeah. Cumulative was a three five. In my junior year, I held a three seven. That's what's up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I yeah. I took calc and physics in high yeah. school, bro. Yeah, so yeah. I ain't trying to do none of that. But anyway, but what I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying is, when it comes to these kids, I hide them. I hold them to a high standard, so that way, if they do get a C, it's just like the end of the world. But I'm cool with that. Yeah. I want you to treat a C like an F because I tell them all the time, y'all not no average kids. Mm, come on. I don't want y'all to think that average is yeah. good enough. And then y'all it's, go into this work you world. You speak life into them. Yeah. I don't, you go thing. into this world doing average and then all of a sudden you're like, man, I want to make more money. But these companies looking at you like, oh, you average. Or you running your own business and you an entrepreneur and you trying to give your services to somebody, but you giving them average effort. They're going to yeah. be like, I'm not going to pay you. Mm. Bro, we be on, having man. that conversation, Troy, and all this. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, though. But you got to hold these kids accountable early. So with the you right. With the kids, you just got to treat them like adults, kind of like now. That's my mentality. Mm. And it's worked fun. You mm. know, I still allow them to be kids. They still play video games. They still get on my damn nerves. But at the end of the day, Got to make sure you tell them that you love them, and I keep them in my prayers, and we all have Sundays is Sunday fun day. So we watch movies, we talk, we cook, all that stuff, and we kick it. So that way it's a refresh every week. Yeah. Okay. So so none of that. I, you know what? What I, what I do like, because you guys basically did give me two different answers, um, although they're along the same, like, direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, like you do with Bailey, you – there is that um, Papa Bear mentality, you know, like, this is what it is. This is life. You know what I'm saying? Like, life is hard. <laughs> so you have to get yourself, you got to kick yourself in the gear or life is going to kick your butt. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it's more of that tough love. Mm-hmm. Now, when does, if it does, when does the gentleness kick in or the empathy for maybe them struggling with something that they honestly feel like emotionally deep down they can't do. You know what I'm saying? When when does that come in? I don't know if you had anything, but we, I'm going through it right now. Man. Oh, man. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I might not really be too much there yet, you know what I'm saying, with the age that my daughter's at. I right? got you. So. Yeah. Uh, the two different answers just comes from really the, just the different stages. I'm in a different right. stage than yeah. he's in. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. When I'm when I'm there, mm. when my daughter's 13, yeah, it's gonna be a whole different type of parenting system. But the thing that you want for your kids, you want to, you want to build that bridge that you can come talk to me. Yeah, I don't really feel like I had that with my parents. Mm. It's like, man, if I mention this. They might think I'm like this. Yo, same. And the, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> same. So yeah. I didn't really have that. So mm-hmm. with my daughter, I'm like, yo, you could literally like tell me, tell me about your day. Tell me about your friends. Tell me about this. Do you have any questions about anything? If you have a question about anything, come to me. Yeah. Because the last thing I need is for you to be asking your quote unquote friends up the street and they all jacked up. You know what I'm saying? Or run into not, some boy. Yeah, I'm not trying to mess Ooh. with none of that. No, 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 no. I absolutely get that. <laughs> I get that, Bailey. <laughs> What do you like? When does that when does that gentleness <clears throat> kick in? Because you know, yeah, no, I expect way more out of you as a as a a student. You know, mm. I expect way more out of you as a sixteen year old or a thirteen year old or fourteen year old. Like you're a teenager, I expect more. But when does when does that empathy come in? When like at what time or what situation are we like? dialing back and are like yo okay i got you i see it i see it okay now gentle you know when does that happen to be honest a lot of it is them going through the same thing we go through as adults right now being black yeah uh, a mm-hmm. lot of them deal with the social pressures of being a great black person mm-hmm. versus being a stereotypical black person Come on, that they man. Get grouped in and judged Come in all on. the time yep so we have to speak life into them and letting them know that you need to be yourself. Don't be afraid to be yourself. People's going to talk about you. People going to talk behind your back. Mm. At the end of the day, you keep being yourself. And all three of them are different. Mm. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the youngest one is very bright, but she can be sensitive. And so sometimes she let things get to her because she doesn't like when people say things that are wrong about her, but she doesn't understand the concept that people do that to get a reaction and a trigger out of her. So uh, we always tell her, don't react. Just chill out, come home, mm-hmm. talk to us. Now, if it's something that's bothering you, bring yeah. it up to an adult, go from yeah. there, all that stuff with the kids. Um, on Ramon's end, it's more of with him being autistic. Yeah. A lot of times he feels like he is not good enough because of the classroom settings that he's mm. in, being with kids who are other, always, always autistic also. Yeah. And that the spectrum is so opposite from what he is because he's functional, but he just has a developmental delay to where mm. it takes him a minute to comprehend stuff, but eventually he'll get it. Yeah. But he's with kids that's with like Asperger's and have real problems and stuff like that. So mm. some classes he struggles in because they're just, he's not used to the full blown struggles of mental health yeah. and stuff like that. He, he doesn't recognize it, but I've never told him that he has, He's a different kid than anybody else. I've always treated him normal and kept him around normal kids. Right. But the reason why I do that is because I don't want him to get into a sung in place to where he feels like he can act a certain kind of way. He can do things because he's super smart, but he's opposite. Ramon will be, Ramon is the bare minimum kid. Oh, Like he will try to do everything at the bare minimum just to please or satisfy anything. But he's super smart. Bro, that's it. But he's super smart. (laughs) And then, you know, oh, this one, hers is just, hers is the normal black woman syndrome. Mm. Like, she's already kind of filled out, curvy and everything. So she has to deal with what she wears, how it looks different from what her friends wear. Mm. But on top of that, her being a student athlete also, so having good grades and playing sports and getting attention from boys that these little thought pockets always be chasing after and don't want to (laughs) get with. But then on top of that, She's so involved with everything outside doing community stuff, too, that we I don't want her to feel like she's pressured to do anything. Right. She's just so involved with a lot of things in her life. And sometimes it hit her so hard that she may feel like she needs a break. So oh, I, yeah. So I encourage her to say, hey, man, if you need a break, just say that. Yeah, she has to, she's at the point in her life where she's wearing a whole bunch of different hats. Man, all the time, though, yeah. 24-7. That's 24 7 days, now. man. That's, that's like, tough. <laughs> like church, yeah. like church, she's mm-hmm. a head usher. Uh-huh. She's involved with like the SG role thing where you do the yeah. community work. Um, then she's soccer and then she's in avid. Yeah. And then on top of that, you know, she does um, a little bit of dance on the side too. But then she has her babysitting license. So she babysits for a side hustle to get money. Like she mm-hmm. does all kind of stuff. And she's looking for a job right now. So. Typical woman stuff, like she's already yeah. in grown woman mode yeah. in a 16 year old, but that's yeah. a lot of pressure. Yeah. So, so how do you combat that? Like, how, how are you, like, I guess, making it easier for her? Just speak up. Situations? A lot of times just speak up and talk because what I want, what I don't want to do is tell you what you need to do. Mm. I want you to decide on what you want to do. And then I'm here to help advise or guide you to where you need to go. But every time I tell her, like, don't pressure yourself. And to being somebody you're not. Stay true to yourself. And so it's cool to have friends, but you're going to have friends that come and go. Yeah. Because they're going to be man. jealous of what you got going on. But you're also going to have opportunities and situations come up to where you got to make a choice on are you going to are you going to sacrifice this time to dedicate more time to this? And is it going to better yourself? Or are you going to take this learning opportunity and beat yourself up because you thought it was a waste of time? When really it's a lesson in the blessings. Mm. Mm. So you gotta you gotta struggle and you gotta go through these things um, to learn yourself and to learn what you want to do. But you gotta guide yourself and know what your purpose is. Don't try to be like everybody else. Mm. Mm. I like that. Bro, this cat got some wisdom, my guy. He gotta write a book. Go ahead. He'll, he'll write one. I know. He, he go. Will. He actually. No, I know he's gonna write one. <laughs> We gonna need that. Just, we gonna need that gym. Bro, I just smoke cigars, drink water. <laughs> you got so you, hey, you got some knowledge. That's where it that, comes. He just got the cigar and yeah. sit on the side of his mouth, on, and he just like, you know what, bro? I'm I just old, thought about this, bro. I'm an old soul. I've always, when I was younger, I always hung around um, my elders and older people because yeah. I always wanted wisdom, and I never wanted the hard way. I always wanted the things the easy way. But what I learned is that I had my kid at 19. Ah, yeah, you had to grow up quick. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. I had my kid at 19, oh, so man. I graduated and became a dad. That was my graduation year. So 
I've been doing this for a minute, but the one thing that I will say is that if it wasn't for him, I don't know where I'd be right now. So I thank God for him every day for allowing me to be Absolutely. the man that I am. Not necessarily the father or the person, but just the man that I am. Mm-hmm. He, yeah. he continues to challenge me to do better day that, in and day out. There's that example there. Yeah, for sure. That's lit, man. Um, uh, for me, I mean, I'm not there yet. Obviously, I don't have any daughters. Um, but I do uh, I do pray that when, the day that I actually do have my, or not even daughters, but just children in general, you know, um, there there has to be that, I guess you would say, like there, the separation of being the cool dad or being the cool adult and being the parent. Um, and I think parenting in that way as a father, being the parent, there has to be a balance. Um, you know, they have to see, like, daddy don't play, but they got to see that daddy cares. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I believe for, and even for our wives, um, I believe for, for the women that are around us, we know that we get stuff done, but they sometimes they don't know if we care. And I think that's mm. what's really important by separating mm. that, um, or, I'm sorry, balancing uh, masculinity with gentleness or that, you know, the, the softness that's needed for things to be um, productive in our relationships, our, our uh, parenthood, our business relationships and things like that. When it comes to business, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty firm on how I want to do things, mm-hmm. but I'm also open to, you know, opinions. I want to know your thoughts. Not everybody's just who's, <laughs> who's immediately here around me working with me with these things. What do you think? Okay. You know, a lot of times I'm not taking your opinion, but I do want to know it. Yeah, and that's okay. Sure. And that's me keeping that balance mm. and including, you know, the people around me. There, There is a, there is a purpose, you know, for me doing everything, but I've just taken that route now where I can't muscle everything. I tried to muscle this business vibe Wichita. I've tried to muscle this for years mm-hmm. and realize that I've had all the help around me that I needed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think um, us as men, we do need to take in consideration. um, Everything doesn't take uh, uh, the angry black man or the, the strong muscular physically, you know, buff black man. It doesn't, it doesn't take the, the soft, gentle, kind, Man, and I'm saying black man because of the name of the show and who's listening mostly. Um, but it doesn't take just a softer, kinder. No, it takes all of them. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? The understanding black man. It takes all of us. It Absolutely. takes all of those characteristics. So um, I think just moving forward, this is what we're going to do um, when we get to uh, address certain things within our lives is that, you know, once we get to break it down and understand it, like, I want to know how you guys can be better moving forward each time we address these types of things. So I'll say for me, moving forward, um, uh, accountability, I will, I'll lean on my, on my guys and I'll lean on my, my wife Mm -hmm. um, for sure to. to hold me accountable when I don't keep that balance. When I'm, I'm trying to, be that that over masculine entity right right <laughs> you know and trying to just fix it on my own and being stubborn and all that because it just doesn't it, yeah so um yeah i think i mean that's super important exactly what you said man but to add to that once men realize that you need a team absolutely mm. come on man Yes, you know what I'm saying. You need a team. You need a team. Nothing, and I, man, I know I've I've told Troy this a hundred times. Nothing great has came from just one person. You could do good things. Yeah, mm-hmm. good things are gonna happen, but nothing great. Everything that's great requires a team. Yes, Jesus had twelve disciples. Boy, bro. you better speak on it. I almost gave you a church fan. Come on, bro. <laughs> 
I was just, I was just thinking. Jesus I, had my twelve. Mind, dog. Come on now. God in the flesh had twelve helpers. Come on. This man that can do whatever, mm. he still had help. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So like, and also, it goes back to I'm I'm a I played football, so I'm gonna put this in football terms. Let's talk. Tom Brady, for example, arguably the best quarterback of all time. Yes. There's still ten other people on the field, which you know what I'm saying help protect him, help catch the ball, do whatever. But the only thing that Tom is focused on. Is throwing the ball. He don't run. We we all know that. Yeah. He don't block. Yeah. He don't he don't tackle. Try to. His fo- <laughs> his focus is throwing the rock. Yeah. So as a man, when you can get a good team around you and really tap into your strengths, yeah. you don't have to worry about about your weaknesses because we all got weaknesses. That's what your team's there for to cover you in the weaknesses, man, bro. Come on. You see what I'm saying? So a lot That's of fire. men are, I feel like, are falling off, are messed up because they feel like they can do everything. It's not possible. Oh, oh, it's not possible, dog. Tag me in, dog. Go ahead, man. <laughs> Tag me in. <laughs> Go ahead. So, with that being said, yeah, we got to take off the cape. Ooh. Come on, man. Put it in the closet. We got we got <laughs> we gotta take Leave off the cake. There, man. We are so used to being perfect that any time that we fall short by the kids or by our wives or by anybody, we beat ourselves up. And that's what the pride in a man comes from. And that's our biggest mm. downfall. Yeah. It's okay to be proud of yourself, but don't let your stubbornness get in the Come way on. of learning how you can be better. A lot of times you doing too much and somebody's just trying to tell you to slow down. That's not a sign of weakness. That's actually somebody that cared for you. A lot of times we get these kids that say, hey, I want you around more. We looking at, well, we got to go grind and make this money. No, the money's going to be there this time that's useful right now when they 9 or 10 or when they 12 or 13, they're going to be there again because they only this age at one time. They're mm. going to grow up and move on, so you may not get that. So you got to take advantage, you got to slow down, and you got to look at things in perspective right now. Yes, we're grinding now to chill later, but at the end of the day, you still got to take your mental breaks. You still got to rest. Yeah. You still got to be a father. And all that is encompassing of being the man that you need to be, but at the end of the day, don't beat yourself up for being perfect as a man. You're never going to be perfect. Come on. But you're always going to be loved and be the best in the eyes of those that you take care of. Mm. Come on. It's powerful. Give yourself a break. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah. Cut yourself some rest. Mm-hmm. We don't rest as black men. We do not rest. Nah, uh, man. I'm already thinking Team. right now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing. Real, we, we be laying it's down. Real, we be bro. in bed. And yeah, like, real. We be laying down and we be in bed. And we can't sleep because our mind is racing because we have personal like we have goals internally set for ourselves absolutely that realistically would take us five years to do <laughs> and i'm thinking about it and right we're now. <laughs> trying to do it right now we yeah. want to be there next week yep <laughs> you know what i'm saying we got to slow down so i'm in this with this hey black man are you okay man absolutely uh i'm at, definitely at a point in my life where i understand um, having strong relationships um, and people that can call you out and you accept that. Like, Troy, if you call me out on something, if, if, if you call me out on something, mm. you've probably been thinking it for a while and, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, the water jar is just tipping over and it's like, bro, I, I have to say something now. I'm not telling you all of a sudden. Right. Yeah. yeah. Nah. This has been happening, bro. And right. th- I need to say this to you right now. Absolutely. Um, and I'm at that point in my life, man. And my relationships are better. My marriage is better. You know what I'm saying? Mm. My marriage definitely is a lot better. Mm, good. But, you know, man, when I was growing up, I was th- I was that young kid. You can't tell me nothing. Man. Nah. I got it all man. figured out. Man. Man, <laughs> I, I'm playing football, college football. I'm starting as a freshman. You can't tell me nothing. I know exactly what's going on. You know what I'm saying? I was that kid for a long, for a long time. And I was in the entertainment business, yeah. music. Ah, bro, you can't tell me nothing. But now the age I'm at, ah, man, you got to throw that man in the trash. <laughs> he was trash. 
<laughs> so really, man, opening up conversation and being honest yeah. and wanting, you have to have a desire to yes, want sir. to be better. For sure. Yeah. A lot of people, they just, you know, when you're young, you got a lot of time. Oh, man, I'm 18, 19. I'll just do whatever and fix it later. Yeah. That's not true because you could still be. I mean, we know people who are 40 and 50 and they still kids. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, come on, now. You, you, you know, you, know you got an <laughs> uncle or something that never grew up. Never grew up. You're talking about people. You, <laughs> you been convicted a lot of people right now. <laughs> but for real, you have, if, man, if you want to be better, man, and it's, you know, a lot of it comes from, I mean, for me, Man, Eric Thomas, man, he's that dude. You know what I'm saying? A lot of a lot of motivational speaking um, from him and listening to his stuff daily, man. Yeah. It it literally changed my life. And then the real challenge is we live in Wichita, Kansas, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I graduated high school in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. So oh, like, man. if we fly out to Atlanta right now, it's popping. And we get off the plane, mm-hmm. bro. You're talking about seeing black successful people everywhere yeah, yeah. and they're not stunting no that's the thing out yeah. here it's like i feel like if i'm a successful black man then i'm stunting on you and i'm not right right out there it's just a lifestyle i don't think here in wichita kansas where we live at mm-hmm. a black successful man really isn't a lifestyle it's just like Oh man, you really think you stunting on me? No, nah, I'm not. I'm just trying to better myself. I don't even care what you got going on. Right. I'm worried about mine. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's what we're still trying to create in this culture. And you know, Wichita, we like 10 years, 15 years behind every other big city. Mm. So I Can feel I like I owe it to Wichita. That's why I work so hard with the humble greatness, man. I feel like I owe it to Wichita. So one day when I pass away, because I'm not going to be here forever, mm-hmm. or one day when I shut down the studio, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever, whatever the Lord has planned for me, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. People look back and they're like, you know what? That dude, humble greatness, he really cared about us. Yeah. He really cared about the black community, bro. Yeah. He really tried his best in everything he did. That's the reason why I work so hard and I want to be the best at what I do. That's the driving force. That's yeah. it. So you okay? That's, yeah, that's, I'm that's, good. Yeah, my black man. That's a long here. answer, man. Yeah. Cool, bro. <laughs> that, it was on your chest. We, I'm glad you got it out, bro. We take advantage of this of our therapy. I yeah. appreciate it. And Literally, so you ain't gotta have nobody judging you or nothing like that. You coming in here, honest, open, and transparent. Hi, but at the end of the day, we keep it real with each other. And so, we always say on the show that we are men of faith and that we love God. And, Absolutely. You know, for me, it's always been. Uh, it's always been one of them things though <laughs> to where we gotta be okay with saying that we not okay right come on man uh, it took me a long time it took, took me, me a long time it took me until what a couple months ago it took me until a couple months yeah. ago to say that I'm not okay yeah but I can say today that I'm good I got kids that are good job that's good mm. family that's good my boys, that's good. But at the end of the day, I continue to realize that mentally, spiritually, and physically all have to be on the same level. So mm. drinking drinking water every day, just doing the physical things is what's going to keep my body healthy. Yeah. Emotionally, and saying that I'm uh, not okay or that I'm okay is going what's going to keep me balanced to stay humble as far as Making sure I not only hold myself accountable, but allowing other people to bring themselves in to help me out if that's what I need. Because sometimes I get so blinded in tunnel vision with working so much on the road, off the road, trying to do this, trying to do that. I need somebody to tell me, hey, sit down. Hey, relax. Hey, take a day off. Hey, let me take the kids, do this. Hey, come in here and talk because it's been a minute since we talked. And then spiritually, you got to stay prayed up. I started journaling back in July. Mm, it's helped yeah. me out spiritually. I'm sure that that's been really good yeah. for you. Journaling yeah. has been uh, a great alternative therapy. But um, I also stay prayed up. Um, and like I said, my motto since my dad passed away is lessons and the blessings. So at the end of the day, every lesson is not, or every L that you take is not a loss. It's a lesson. And then that always turns into a blessing if you allow it to. Right. And so with that mind frame, every day I wake up and if I struggle at work, I'm like, dang, I need to do better. But when I come home, I decompress and do what I need to do. But I'm like, all right, cool. 
I learned this. I messed up on this. Let me go in tomorrow, figure it out. Boom, figure it out. Now I got doctors that's calling me, talking about fly here, fly there, go come to New Orleans, come to Kansas City, come to Oklahoma City, come, come to on, Dallas, man. help do this stuff all the time. And that's why I'm always on the road. But the yeah. blessing is that I'm financially stable now Absolutely. to be able to take care of these kids and allow them to be what they need to be. So I'm okay now, man. But at the end of the day, being able to be open and transparent and vulnerable with yourself yeah. is the best thing. So I appreciate it. And uh, I'm all right. Good deal. Good deal. How about you, Doc? Yeah, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I am I'm better than I deserve. I'm mm, definitely okay. Blessed. Man, I I look Good at way. it. I just uh took in my nephew and you know, it's me and my wife, this is huge for us. Mm-hmm. Uh with us working on having our children of our own. Um it it does it like at first you kind of think about it and it's like, okay. Huh. Is this the right thing to do? But it's what we were called to do mm-hmm. for mm. my nephew, you know. And uh, ain't nothing crazy. He just he gets another opportunity here, a different opportunity to kind of spread his wings. And you know, um, how old is he? He's thirteen. So, uh, and, and he's we gonna you know do some things, put him in baseball and stuff like that. And you know, shout out to my sister for allowing allowing that to be a possibility, so that I can pour into him. Absolutely. You know, um, uh, I'm, I'm excited for that. But, you know, ultimately uh, trying to balance all the things that I want to do, you know, versus all the things that I need to do in life right now. Uh, I, I, I've had to sit back and, you know, think about how I want to attack it. Because wants and needs are two different things. The stuff I need <laughs> are obviously things I need. Like, mm-hmm. I have to take care of home, my marriage. I have to take care of my nephew now. Um, I have to take care of this business. You know what I'm saying? And then most importantly, I have to take care of my my spiritual. I have to take care of myself. Yeah. Um, That's a lot. Uh, but, the, you know, I, I get caught up sometimes uh, taking care of the stuff I, I want. Mm. Over some of the things that I need, absolutely. I yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'll put myself in that boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we, yeah. we do that, bro. We all yeah. do. We just not accountable enough to admit it. Yeah, yeah. Like that self accountability, mm-hmm. right? So, mm-hmm. um, I'm thankful that I do have people around me that will hold me accountable. That will be like, yeah. but you said this, Troy. <laughs> I'm like, dang it, you're right. So, uh. You know, um, but I'm healthy. Uh, all our bills are paid. Come on, man. You know, we're breathing. We're tithing. Man, I, I can't complain. So I'm good, man. I appreciate you guys, man. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate no doubt, man. Yes, sir. No doubt. Appreciate it. Love, dog. Love. Yes, sir. I can't let him take my soul. Nah, 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 no. Oh, I can't let him take my soul. Nah, 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 no. See, we was cool right before I hit the fence. But he hit the fan when I got him down and pinched.